Welcome in to the Hustle Podcast. Kelly Stewart here with CT Bets at CT16. CT Bets 16. Now I already screwed it up on Twitter. Make sure you guys are giving him a follow. He has been on a nice run in college football and an even nicer run, which we'll get to here in the NFL, the Westgate Super Contest. Don't forget tonight, Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, every single Thursday night, CT Bets, Adam Trigger, Drew Martin. Maybe it's me, maybe it's Brian Power, maybe it's Mark Zeno. We don't know. It depends on how uh, much stuff I've got going on throughout the week. But I would not miss doing 20 minutes here with my guy, Chris. We're going to talk Survivor tonight as well, my new job at OutKick. And then we're going to give you guys each a bet that we like for this weekend that we have not given out on any other show. So, Chris, I mentioned your Red Hot run, but here I am feeling really good. I went 4-1 and one in my Kelly and Vegas entry finally in the West nice. Gate, and I get I click in the standings, and sure as shit, there is Chris in the top what three, four? Uh, we are uh, I'm fourth, yeah, tied for fourth. Okay, 14 and a half points, and uh, first place is at 16 points, so we're a game and a half out. It's been uh, it's been a really, really good run, uh, been on fire here. So, you know how it is, Kel, it's really tough. I mean, it's it's 18 weeks and it's a grind, so. You know, they have the mini contests and they have the, you know, the quarterly contests and the yearly contests. And we're off to a good start. So we're going to try and keep it running here. Uh, but yeah, no, no complaints so far. We're, uh, we're rocking and rolling here, Cal. Stay hot, stay disciplined, picking five games. I do a show with Pam. Uh, we call it Stack of Stats because that's Pam's old podcast name. She and I are in the Westgate Super Contest and Circa. And sometimes it's kind of tough because I know you're in both as well. Sometimes the lines do vary. One line comes out Wednesday afternoon, one Thursday morning. So sometimes trying to pick and choose, is that half point really worth it? Sometimes it's not. Man, five picks though. Uh, it is just excruciating. You're always happy for a three and two, four and one. I have yet to have a five and oh. So I will be cheering for that this week. Have you already made your selections? Do you know uh, pretty much where you're going? Or are you more one of those guys that likes to wait till Saturday morning when the dust settles because the lines are stale? Yep, uh, that's exactly what I do. I have six or seven games that I really like, and I wait until Saturday morning, uh, and I usually have them in around noon Eastern uh, on Saturday. So that's uh, that's been my strategy, kind of same as yours. You, you like to see what happens throughout the week, and and yeah, usually you could get a stale line because you know the Westgate and Circa they come out with their contest lines, right? On is it Tuesday night or Wednesday night? So Tuesday night. Wednesday night for for Westgate. Thursday morning for Circa. Tuesday night the Survivor lines are up because obviously right. it's just a pick 'em league uh, on the proxy service website. So kind of one of those things where you got to be a little selective. Very rarely are they off by more than like a half a point, but it is interesting. I mean, tonight, for example, the Bears are six at Circa and five and a half at Westgate. Not that six is a monster key number, but it is a key number nonetheless. But since we're talking contests, we got to talk about our Survivor pick this week. I have spent more time on Survivor than I ever have in my entire life. I did nine entries this year. Three of them went out with the Denver Broncos week two. You and I are still alive. Ariel, Pam and I are still alive. Me and John Murray are still alive. And uh, a couple other guys, my buddy Chad and I are so alive. My buddy Steve and I are so alive. But it is, I am like over here, like uh, from the hangover <laughs> when he's got all the numbers flashing. Because I'm trying to map out things that aren't, like I don't want to be the most popular pick each week, right? Sure. But at the same time, sometimes the most popular pick is the correct pick, like the week we took Buffalo. I, every single entry I had Buffalo and I'm going, oh God, this is nauseating. And it really wasn't that bad. There was really no sweat, no chance of losing. Last week, you and I had the Niners when several other of them, we had done the Niners a week prior to get it done and cheer for chaos on Sunday. We really had to sweat the Chiefs on Sunday night in um, New York. Well, technically New, New Jersey, but you know, I hate taking road teams. So now I'm back on that no more road teams thing. So you and I, <laughs> let's talk about this week. So this is this is why I like to have partners, right? Because I'm going to give credit to you here. You and I like to start our conversation pretty early, and we started on Sundays. And and I said to you, I said, uh, you know, I like the Lions uh, right now. And and you brought out a, a a good point. And you said, well, you know, CT, why don't we wait and see what happens tomorrow night? You know, the Giants are playing Monday Night Football, and the Giants the following week, week five, are playing at the Miami Dolphins. And, and she, you, you said, you know, it's nice to have a couple of options on Thanksgiving. And, you know, I was kind of content with 
you know, just having the Dallas Cowboys on, on Thanksgiving. You brought up a great point, and, you know, Lions look really good this year. And it's nice to have, you know, two options going into Thanksgiving because you don't know what's going to happen. So we did. We watched the game on Monday night, and uh, for our teasers, unfortunately, the Giants looked absolutely horrible and are in a lot of trouble. They're They're banged up. No Saquon. The offensive line is really banged up. So now you get the Dolphins off a loss a bad loss in Buffalo and they're going to come back home. You know, they're going to be pretty pissed and they get to play a, a very uh, terrible giants team that has a lot of problems right now that can't move the ball. You know, that the dolphins are going to score it. it I, I don't want to say it looks like a, you know, automatic, but man, I, I just don't see how we cannot take the dolphins this weekend and, and save the lions and, and Cowboys for Thanksgiving, Cal. Just a couple things. Uh, also, you can use the Black Friday game, which is really interesting um, this year because it is Jets Miami. But the last thing I want to do is lay it with Miami on Black Friday at the Jets because the Jets uh, maybe are not as bad, at least defensively. Maybe Zach Wilson doesn't suck as much as we thought he did. That being said, that is terrifying. Divisional games on the road absolutely scare me in Survivor. Um, and we've spoken about that several times. Also, Dak has gotten hurt several times and now is he playing healthy is, is are the cowboys playing well are they going to be probably depending on how the commanders end up playing and the cowboys end up playing probably at least minus eight and a half on thanksgiving to that team yeah absolutely but have we seen them lose to the commanders plenty of times on thanksgiving yeah we sure have uh so, so to be able to choose between the lions and the cowboys i think using tua while he's still upright and healthy against a really crappy giants team made the most obvious sense to us because chris and i had already used the commanders whoo week one that was sweaty and scary but we made it uh and i think tonight's commanders game versus the bears is also going to be very sweaty and scary i did use them in one i could not convince the ladies to use them with me chris do you think that there's a chance that the bears get a win tonight I do actually. I it's, I don't want anything to do with the game. I really don't. But yeah, I could I could absolutely see it. And want to know what my brother called me this morning, and he said, "Hey, I want to get your thoughts." He said, uh, "Jenna and I are thinking about taking the Commanders tonight in Survivor. What do you think?" And I said, "Steve, I said I, I'd be scared to death to do that." And he said, "Well, uh, you know, I think it's the last time you'd you'd actually be able to take the it Commanders." Is. And I said, "You're absolutely right." I said, "Steve." I, this game makes me think about week one, Kelly and I, Uncle Benny and I, we had the commanders yeah. and man, it was an absolute grind. Three quarters of that game, Kel, you and I are texting. I'm like, this, what a terrible idea this was. We're going to go out right now. So that's exactly what tonight reminds me of. And I'd be terrified to have the commanders and survivor tonight. It would yeah, be off the ugly overtime loss. Yeah. I think Trig Texas or something like three and 21 straight up or so. I was like, can you not yeah. Trig, please just for me? <laughs> okay. So what other survivor leagues are you still uh, alive in? Are you and uncle Ben still alive? Cause I, uncle Benny he and was I one have of the one ones that went out with me with the Broncos. Uncle Benny and I had two. We went out with the Ravens. I think the week after you guys went out with the Broncos. So we have one together. You and I have one together. And Trig and I still have three alive. So I have nice. five alive. I think you have six or seven, right? I have six alive uh, in the Circa contest. I have one that I got invited to by a proxy customer. $750,000 is what the pot is. Um, and you don't have any two pick weeks. I know that's probably going to end up being wow. chopped if you do make it to week 18. But not sure. having to use. So we didn't use. We just use the Lions this week since we don't have to save them for Thanksgiving. We'll see how uh, that ends up panning out. But yeah, that's a huge pot. And it wasn't that big of a buy-in. It was like 500 bucks. So excited to that's see great. that. But yeah, unfortunately, me and the fade, you guys, Uncle Benny, and then my personal entry went out with the lovely Denver Broncos blowing that lead to the said commanders. So on next topic, so we can keep it rolling here. I know you have the hustle here. In about 45 minutes, I got a new job at OutKick. Just filmed the show with Clay Travis today, which is uh, really exciting. I've known Clay for a really long time, and I actually didn't get that much hate on the internet, just a little bit. Um, I know Clay is uh, very opinionated, as am I, uh, but we did a college basketball March Madness at the Westgate Superbook in 2015 March Madness. And so it's kind of really nice to see it come full circle. Me, him, Todd Furman, Andy Roddick. What a combination. Oh, wow. uh, I think I've come a long way since then, and it's been a really fun run. So kind of a full circle moment 
there. I just so happened to be in Nashville the day that Barstool let me go and uh, just so happened to be out with Clay Travis. And he said, let me get you taken care of. We're going to get you over to OutKick. Obviously, lots of moving parts there. Things take time. So very excited to have a new home there. Well, I couldn't be more happy for you. You are very much deserving of that, and uh, you will do an excellent job there. So much deserved. I'm excited to argue with him. The new show is called The Fade, and I hope it doesn't mean people end up fading me. Uh, but Clay had 12 <laughs> college football picks today, and I'm like, I got five, 12? Clay. Yes. Oh, my God. 12. <laughs> That's outrageous. 12. Yeah, he's nuts. And then he had a whole handful of uh, NFL. I'm like, he's like, let me guess. You're like Todd Furman. You're going to have like a, an under the radar play. I go, yeah, I like Marshall a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about but right. It's like yep. one, of, one, of those, one of those things. We got to dig deep. But um, before I let you go, anything else you want to add for this week? And then give me uh, a bet that you have yet to give out on any other show. Yeah, one quick thing that I, I want to touch on. This is a game that you and I have been texting about uh since sunday and and that's the red river shootout and kel i got home from work today i took a look at the screen and finally the, the line came back to earth I, I i couldn't believe that it got up to seven like i took i bet it at five and a half on sunday thinking i was gonna get a great i'm getting a great number i made the game three anything above three i was willing to take i bet it at five and a half i bet it at six and a half i slammed seven and i texted you right when it got to seven on yep. a, um, a, a, an account. So uh, we're all over that. And now it's come back to five, it seems, everywhere. Now that I'm looking at the uh, wager, wager Talk odds screen, I tweeted that one out when it hit seven. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just say, you know, we got a trophy. Let's see what happens. But I really do like OU to win that game. Yeah, being able to get a touchdown there in uh, the Red River shootout rivalry, whatever the hell we're calling it these days, it's always going to be the shootout to me. But I, I do think... Look, Oklahoma is a live dog there. Uh, actually, Pam Maldonado, a big Longhorns fan, that's where she went to school. She tweeted out earlier. She said, hey, listen, we're talking about Texas's resume. Wait, what? What? They played a backup quarterback versus Alabama. They played Rice. Come on, like, let's pump the brakes. Maybe yeah. their resume isn't as impressive as we once thought. And I would kind of have to agree with her there. I think Oklahoma's quietly been flying under the radar. They've been putting up a ton of points. I think Brent Venables has that offense really clicking. So we'll see how this one works. I bet them on the money line as well uh, with two other dogs, which will be out at Superbook. Actually, it is already out. And I even had John Murray boost it for me because, well, that's how abysmal the odds wow. were. Uh, well, Oklahoma came crashing down. The other One yeah. of the other legs came crashing down. So it's like I send these out on Tuesday right when i pick my game sometimes wednesday and unfortunately i can't control what the market does so he i i thought maybe we'd reverse jinx it right i kept saying that the boosts were bad luck like well it's not working just getting true odds so maybe we'll give a little little juiced up odds to uh make it more worth our while but give me your uh bet for the show and i think you're gonna really like mine actually Okay, I think you're going to like mine too. Uh, I'm going to college for the KIV and CT show for my pick, and it's going to be a good one. Washington State at UCLA, Cal, and uh, it's at the Rose Bowl, one of the best places to watch a game in all of sports. And both these teams are coming off a bye, so both should be rested up. And Washington State, right, one of the surprise teams uh, we've seen so far this season. And the Cougs, they're they're four and zero. That they have some great wins, you know, most notably over Wisconsin and Oregon State. And the trigger man, Cameron Ward, he's been outstanding, honestly, probably one of the best quarterbacks in college football so far this year. He's got 13 TDs, no picks. And man, that kid could run too. UCLA, on the other hand, coming in three and one, their only loss being most recently 14-7 uh, at Utah, but they've been in great shape on their center. The freshman, Kel, Dante Moore, this kid's great. Chip Kelly is, is known for having young quarterbacks and, and really working well with them and making them great um quarterbacks and, and great throwers and it, this kid has what it takes to, to keep ucla in in every game in this tough pac-12 conference that's uh going to be unfortunately dismantled at the end of this year i don't want to take anything away from the cougs but i think it's worth pointing out they, they've only played one road game this year kel that and and that's kind of that's kind of crazy and that was week one versus colorado state and the last three have been at home now they have to go on the road to the rose bowl Tough place to play against a UCLA defense that really hasn't got enough credit here. They led the conference in, in points allowed right now, and they're second in yards per game allowed. They only gave up one touchdown 
to a tough Utah team. UCLA has a coaching advantage here with Chip Kelly. I'm on the Bruins here. I played on UCLA minus three. Yeah, I can see why some people like Wazoo here, but I unfortunately think they are the dog with fleas. It seems like a lot of people really like them here uh, this weekend, and I'm just not one of them. But I'm going to take a team that was this close to making my parlay, but I just didn't think they could win outright. So that probably means they're going to win outright because that's what's been happening all season long. I've been terrible at picking the dogs to win outright and just getting picking teams that are just getting obliterated. Uh, and this is a team that I love. I love Oregon State. Some of their fans are kind of dickheads, but that's beside the point. I will not let it ruin my fandom for this team because they have been monstrous underdogs for me for a long time. But now they're not monster underdogs anymore. Now all of a sudden they're the favorites. They were favorites last week. And uh, if you remember, I said I liked Oregon State in uh, my Superbook video. And unfortunately, uh, the second leg, Cincinnati, did not get there for us. But I knew I was late to the party and didn't want to lay four and a half, but I thought Oregon State would win that game. Look, that Beavers defense looked great against, well, a Cam rising list Utah. And that's kind of what we expected from them. But again, this team is not used to going and being road favorites. Chris, what did I text you a couple weeks ago? Man, was the steal of Ralph's college football draft California for us, right? Like we were trying yep. to dig deep and I'm like, God, can Cal win four games? Now I'm going, Cal might go to a bowl game. I don't know if they can win this game, but nine and a half is an insane number. Oregon State, USC on deck. They just beat Utah. Do they really care about this Cal team who really struggled last week against Arizona State? If you look at that box score, it actually wasn't as close as it appeared, right? Yes, Cal's defense gave up 430 yards, which is terrifying. But they held them to just 3 of 15 on third down, Chris. And that is what I'm looking at here. If Cal's defense can step up and stop Oregon State here, right, I do believe this is going to be a lot closer. The Bears have, on paper, out-yarded all of their opponents 63 yards per game. So I do think this team's a little bit better, plus they're 5-0 and against a spread of home dogs, less than two touchdowns. Again, we're looking at this Beavers team being those underdogs, those scrappy underdogs for years. Now we're asking them to go on the road and beat Cal by basically two touchdowns. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to see how this one plays out. I uh, hope I don't regret not putting anything on the money line. We'll leave it at that. I love your play. I, I, I do. And uh, I think it was week two. Uh, you, myself, Joe Ranieri, we were on the Cal Bears when they were at home as dogs as well. Versus to Auburn. Auburn, they yes. should have won that game outright. We did cash the ticket. We didn't have any money line. And yeah, this Cal team has been money at home this year uh, as a dog. So totally, uh, I like it a lot. I think that will be a very close game there. And they play tough there. They do. Hopefully we can catch the Beavs looking ahead. That never hurts as well. So Chris and I go with two California teams, UCLA laying it on the road at Wazoo and me taking the Cal Bears at home. Remember guys, 7 p.m. Eastern every single Thursday, the Hustle podcast, Drew Martin Betts, Adam Trigger, CT Betts, sometimes myself, probably going to start being Brian Power a lot more with my new job at OutKick. And of course, Mark Zeno filling in on some of the Hustle shorts as well every single day here on the Wager Talk YouTube channel.